Hello everybody, wherever you are and whenever you are. Welcome back for another Deck Tech, and uh, we're going back to basics here, or back to the roots, I guess back to basics might be a little bit misleading, uh, none of that to be found here, but getting back to our blue-white, blue-white roots here at uh, Control Freak MGG, and uh, we're going to be trying out a new deck list here in this in this Legacy League, took in a little, after some, some reflection from the last league we played, playing the bug list, uh, again, going up against that, the Mono Red Prison deck, twice in that one league. Don't want to don't wanna lean too much into it, but I really do, really do dislike uh, losing to losing to Blood Moon. It's it's kind of frustrating. It's part of the format, part of the part of the experience, I guess. But at the same time, um, I was also kind of expressing maybe some of my doubts at a, at a three color uh, mana base in the format at at the moment. So we're going to turn our attention. Uh, in a slightly different direction. So, this list here is uh, pretty much there's a little some small discrepancies in the in the lands. Um, basically, I I played with the fetches I had rather than diversify the fetches as much as the original author of this deck list, uh, Gould Cot, or however you want to pronounce that name here, piloted this list to a uh, a very very high finish, I think in f first or second place in a in a challenge uh, a couple weeks ago. So we're gonna we're gonna take this for a little bit of a spin. Now this is kind of a different twist on the blue white Delver lists that have been have been uh, gaining some popularity recently. So um, this one here is kind of the uh, it's hard to tell where the blue white uh, wave is right now, and it's since its inception to now, you know, whether it's at its crest, whether it's still rising, or whether it's kind of uh, crashing along the shore, so to speak. I'm sure that uh, GP Niagara will give us a much better much better appreciation for where this deck is at in the meta and where it will be in the future, because uh, it seems like it kind of came out of nowhere. Um, Stoneforge Mystic gaining some, some uh, regaining, I guess, some popularity. Um, so, real quick, just a brief deck tech here. This, uh, this, this spin on the deck actually cuts the Delver and relegates it into the sideboard. Uh, so instead, it can be this really compact uh, mid-range type control strategy here. And again, we are playing cards like actual counterspell. And uh, we've got a ton of spell pierces, even some spell snares. So got some heavy, heavy hitting uh, counter magic suite here, plus... Uh, Plenty of, of cards here that basically say, make this thing go away, I don't want to look at it anymore, which are the cards that I really enjoy having access to in a deck uh, when I sit down to play a game of Magic. So, I'm, uh, I'm feeling this this calling to me. Uh, I have not played a Delver deck before, so you'll have to bear with me here as I uh, undoubtedly screw up a few of the uh, micro-interactions that are that are relevant when you're when you're registering the card Delver of Secrets in a, in a Legacy deck. Um, because there will be bumps and bruises along the way. Of course, I'm sure you know this getting in. But anyway, I'm super excited to play this deck. Again, the first ever Legacy event that I played in, I did play an Esper Stoneblade uh, deck, and I had, a, I had a blast with it. Um, and I would prefer a deck like this to something like Miracles, just because I think Miracles is just so so full of air, you know, and it it just has a lot of... Yeah, I think it it, it has a... A really really low floor but a really 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 high ceiling and uh, I don't want to be stuck rolling around on the floor so we're gonna we're gonna try and play a deck that has a couple as close as you can get I guess in the strategy to a free win card here in uh, tr in true name nemesis and so we're gonna play a couple of those and uh, this deck is also interestingly enough playing a one of in the main and one of the sideboard copy of palace jailer another card that's people are just kind of maybe fully realizing the, the strength of the of the monarch ability. Um, so the interesting thing, if you're if you're unfamiliar with the mechanic, uh, <clears throat> so when typically when a monarch card enters the battlefield, that player that card's controller becomes the monarch, and in order for the monarch to pass back and forth, I believe it's a uh, the person who is not the monarch has to be able to deal damage to the player to the the player that is the monarch, and then they become the monarch. So, uh, bonus points where, in paper, if I ever sleeve a deck up with this mechanic, I am definitely getting one of those, uh, one of those paper crowns from Burger King, although I guess I better get one soon, 
if they're going to business or whatever's going on there. But uh, I'm going to get one of those paper crowns from Burger King, and I'm just going to pull that out of the bag and uh, pop it on my head there. So if my opponent is as childish as I am, well, then we can we can take turns passing the crown back and forth. But ideally, ideally, you play this... Uh, this deck, or play this card even at an opportunity where you're in a commanding position and get your own one-sided Howling Mine for a period or a portion of the game. And with uh, a card like True Name Nemesis that makes getting through, uh, makes your opponent's creatures getting through to you somewhat difficult, you shouldn't have a problem with that. So, there's the main deck. Typical legacy mix of uh, cantrips and, of course, our saving grace here, Force of Will. As I mentioned, one additional copy of Palace Jailer and Cyborg. Uh, only one Planeswalker on this list. Uh, the main deck also issues uh, even playing a Singleton Jace. Instead, playing the uh, Gideon Ally of Zendikar can, uh, make, has a sweet army and a can effect. can also close out the game uh, pretty rapidly. And um, also has the upside, of course, of, of dodging Pyroblast. So, some other uh, just kind of stock, really awesome, flexible white sideboard options, as I mentioned, the Delver of Secrets, which I guess come in in the combo matchups, and uh, I guess wherever else we'll have to feel out as we go that we would want those. Some additional counter spells here for the control and also uh, combo matchups, a Supreme Verdict in the sideboard, uh, some Graveyard Hate for all those Phoenix decks that are, that are running around right now, and a single copy of Engineered Explosives, which is just a really super versatile and powerful card that... Uh, Especially if your deck is in is in three colors, I really don't feel like you should be leaving home without. So, oh, as far as the equipment package goes, uh, only a single copy of Batter Skull and a single copy of uh, Mazawa Jite, whatever the thing is, this uh, utensil of combat here. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, that's enough of my babbling. We'll go ahead and uh, jump into a league and see what we can do.